Just about one year ago, my guest on press conference today took the leap into entrepreneurship after over 20 years as an executive search consultant. We will talk with Andrew Wheeler, the founder and president of Lincoln Leadership, about his new business, his professional goals, and his views on leadership in our post-COVID-19 business world. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Jim DiLorenzo, the principal of Jim DiLorenzo Public Relations. You can find me online at jimdilorenzo.com. I have found that my career in public relations is my true vocation, telling the stories of my clients and colleagues in a compelling way to drive sales, membership, and awareness. If you have ever had any questions about the role public relations can play in your career or in your business, I would be happy to share my thoughts and experience with you. Please feel free to contact me directly, either by email at jim at jhdenterprises.com or by cell phone or text message at 215-266-5943. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. My guest today, Andrew Wheeler, launched his new business, Lincoln Leadership, uh, 11 months ago. His deep experience in executive search includes the successful completion of more than 500 searches, including many at the CEO, president, director, and board level. His passion around leadership began early in his life when, as a boy growing up in Portland, Oregon, his parents instilled the values that would shape his career. Uh, he tells the story of his father, a primary care physician, who would often take him on his hospital rounds and said to him, the patient knows what is wrong. You have to ask the right questions to find a diagnosis. The heart of this idea, that the path to finding the perfect solution lies in the ability to listen to someone's needs and aspirations, is one of the tent poles of Andrew's new business, Lincoln Leadership. A dedicated alumnus and 25-year class agent of Bowdoin College in Brunswick, Maine, Wheeler began his career in executive search at Heydrich and Struggles before joining the Diversified Search Group. Over a 20-year career at Diversified, he came to lead the firm's education and nonprofit practice and placed leaders at some of the nation's most august institutions, including Penn Medicine, the March of Dimes, New York University, Williams College, Capital Area Food Bank, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and Rutgers Health in addition to hundreds of more specialized colleges, nonprofits, and hospitals. It's a pleasure to reconnect with my old colleague, Andrew Wheeler, uh, today on the show. Andrew, thank you for being my guest today, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about your, your new uh, experiences. Jim, it's wonderful to be here and humble to share my narrative and story uh, uh, to the extent that it can help other entrepreneurs and business leaders. So. You were at Diversified Search for just about 20 years, as I recall, and um, you had a lot of exposure to, as, as you've mentioned, the nonprofit and um, higher ed marketplace, uh, placing executives and uh, people in, in, in positions there. What was it that you experienced at Diversified and over the last 20 years that made you say, hey, I want to try to do this on my own. Yeah, great question. The the why question. Uh, I think there are a few reasons. Um, one is growing up in Portland, as you thoughtfully articulated. I grew up with the, the notion is to do well is to do good, uh, and that's of service to the community, service to one another, uh, and to. Uh, large constituencies and so whatever i w thought i would do it had to start with a very strong mission orientation and that's why i gravit i've gravitated towards education higher ed nonprofit, and healthcare. jim secondly i work for an iconic leader uh in this in our industry judy von selmick a, a true pioneer and she she is the classic entrepreneur's entrepreneur so that's that's the main reason I, I joined Diversified uh, many, many years ago. And I learned a lot from her on how to take risk, how to be thoughtful, uh, and how to be decisive. Um, and so third is with COVID, um, I turned, I had a big number in my life at 50. <laughs> and I sort of asked, if not now, when am I going to take the plunge? And because 
I was the the boy selling coffee and donuts and hot chocolate at soccer games while my friends were sleeping in. I've always had this gene, uh, Jim, and so I uh, I went for it. Uh, and I've I've not had a bad day. I've had some bad moments, uh, but I haven't. I have no regrets. What is it about um, being an entrepreneur? that may have surprised you or, or that you weren't expecting? You mentioned bad moments, but not bad days. Are, um, are some of those bad moments the, the growing pains of, of a new business and a, a, and a new role in, in, your, in your life? Yeah, great question. The bad moments relate to two things. One is, do I have the right infrastructure and systems to support and grow my business? And I work in a highly intensive client driven uh, centric business. Executive search requires high touch, uh, engaged thoughtful listening as you described earlier. At the end of the day, my clients pay Lincoln leadership to go out and source premium talent. And so did I? do I have the right CRM? I do. Do I have the right staff? I now have four and two contractors. Um, do I have the right accounting system? So. Those, that infrastructure is really important. Secondly is um, clients are more and more demanding in the service business um, in, in post-COVID times. And so the level of expectation continues to rise. And uh, not every time you're going to get it right when you send a, a candidate into a client to interview for a first round. And so sometimes those are the bad moments of, of uh, my day, but uh, not bad days. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I, I, I faced some of those challenges myself in my, uh, in my early st uh, years as an entrepreneur, and uh, it is it is amazing the things that you think you have a handle on, and then you realize, well, where, I, maybe there's a different way. And I feel like I'm always learning a new thing from each entrepreneur I encounter, each client I encounter, each friend I encounter, and. Uh, have you been able to tap into some of your experiences with uh, Diversified and some of the people that you've met with? Have they provided uh, some, I hate to use, uh, use this in this context, but we're talking about leadership. Have they provided some leadership examples for you or some, some uh, advice along uh, in the last year or so? Yeah, so I actually reached out to a couple icons in our industry and asked them for advice back in the spring of 2021. And three pieces of advice I got. Uh, one was hire early. Uh, don't don't get uh, where you're selling business and then you can't deliver. So um, I have hired relatively early and, and have taken on that, that payroll uh, expense, but okay. I think that was invaluable. Uh, two is to make sure that you have the right expertise to do the work. Uh, we as search people think that we can do anything <laughs> in any search. Uh, and that's partly that confidence that you want type A personality, but sometimes it, it borders on hubris. Uh, and so you need to stick to your knitting and to the lane that you have. And because clients want expertise and a valued relationship. And so those two pieces of advice have been invaluable. Um, I've turned business down, even even if even if it was revenue. All revenue isn't good uh, as much as we'd like to think it is, Jim. As you might know, absolutely. Um, and and so I've hired early, and I've I've tried to select my clients as much as they've selected me, and I've gotten that advice uh, from some icons in our industry. Have you uh, maintained your focus on nonprofits and uh, higher ed? as uh, the, the places that you are going to be working to uh, place executives or have you broadened your focus? No, I, I think to be consistent with the domain knowledge, um, I've, I've focused quite a bit on private higher education, um, whether it's liberal arts colleges or private research universities. Um, again, because I have a reservoir and portfolio of work in those with those kinds of institutions. Um, I understand the culture and the nuance and the complexity. With respect to nonprofits, um, I'm, I'm either working with national nonprofits or place-based nonprofits that really serve the local community. 
uh, and those are my two areas along with academic medicine, Jim. Cool. That's interesting. I, I think that's an interesting niche to be in, a, a field of expertise, and I think that that's increasingly important uh, in, our, in our world is those sectors and um, having that expertise probably uh, resonates with a lot of people in the industry. When, when you set about starting the business, Andrew, I know from some of the things I've read on, on your LinkedIn page and on your website and also on um, a, a press release that you did last year, you named, it, named the business after Abraham Lincoln and his leadership uh, example, if you will. Why did you choose Abraham Lincoln uh, as the namesake for Lincoln Leadership? Yeah, I get this question all the time and I smile. Um, and I think in the, in the, as you look at qualities and characteristics of leadership, um, there are some attributes that uh, stand the test of time, regardless of period or what we're going through. And looking at, at President Lincoln and the fortitude and courage he exhibited um, through incredibly difficult times. Obviously, the Civil War tested his mettle, but his ability to attract a cabinet, a cabinet of, of uh, uh, open-minded, uh, uh, opinionated advisors, um, really reflect reflects his, reflected his his uh, maturity and sense of self. And so I think leadership needs to be grounded with integrity and courage. And you need to get people around the table that aren't going to agree with one another, less, less you. And so the Lincoln name is a very powerful um, figure in our, our, in U.S. history. He was not a perfect leader, as we know, um, but he certainly represents what I think is inspired and values-based leadership, Jim. And that's what really attracted me to name the firm after uh, President Lincoln. Okay, I, I appreciate that, and I, I think that that's a great uh, the way the way you approach that that uh, uh, viewing of him as as a as a human being, as a leader who made mistakes but also made great made great strides. Um, I think that's a very uh, humble and accurate uh, description. Um, you're going to be, you're basing the company in Philadelphia. Are, are you serving clients regionally, locally, or nationally right now? Um, all the above, okay. actually. I've, I've, you know, Philadelphia has been, been the home uh, for myself and family since 1995. And uh, while I'm a or, native Oregonian, I've become a, a rabid Philadelphian. <laughs> and so wave the flag um, to promote the region and really uh, uh, my spirit is, is, is kindled when I can work with a regional nonprofit um, to bring either leadership in the, from outside the region here or to uh, repot someone. Um, but I'm also working with um, uh, some private research institutions nationally mm -hmm. um, in some urban areas. Um, so it's, it's a nice mix of, of having a, a strong regional brand that that I've, I've worked to develop and cultivate with uh, a national presence with um, with some with some clients, Jim. Andrew, I want to continue our conversation, and we come back. We're going to take a quick commercial break here, but when we come back, I'd like to ask you some questions about the leadership principles that you look for in executives that you're placing in these positions, and the importance of that leadership in the post-COVID nineteen world. Uh, we'll be right back with Andrew Wheeler after these commercial messages. Lots of windows, great light. But the birds. They're back. Yes, I hear them. Uh-oh. Why are these birds so angry? At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. We save a lot. I'm going, I'm going, ah! Hurry, hurry! I know, I know, I know. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Welcome back to Press Conference. I'm Jim DiLorenzo, and my guest today is Andrew Wheeler, the founder and president of Lincoln Leadership, 
uh, a startup, uh, entrepreneurial startup by my friend Andrew Wheeler in the executive search uh, area, and they were specializing in uh, searches for leadership in nonprofits and uh, uh, higher education. And Andrew, when we broke uh, for our, our commercial there, you and I were talking about Lincoln and we were talking about leadership. And what I wanted to find out from you, is what are some of the qualities that you think are most important in this post-COVID-19 environment for a leader, um, for someone that you're looking for as an executive to place in the uh, nonprofit or higher ed or even biotech and other companies? Um, what types of leadership qualities are you looking for and you think that play the most important role going forward? Sure, absolutely. Um, I'm going to use the uh, C word or the C letter because there are four C's that I, I really look, look for. Courage, collaboration, consistency, and clarity. So let's talk about courage. Um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, President Lincoln uh, had to make some bold decisions. And, and leadership is all about being considerate but making decisions. And you have to make decisions that are conventional as well as non-conventional and that are not popular. So that requires courage and that requires someone who's comfortable in their own skin uh, to put themselves out there and to make decisions for the greater good of the organization. Um, so courage is, is a very, very important consideration. Mm. Um, collaboration. Leaders need to collaborate. They need to develop relationships with internal constituencies as well as external mm -hmm. stakeholders, their customers, their students, faculty, funders, and the like. And so this notion of nurturing, sustaining, and deepening relationships in a collaborative way uh, is 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 essential is essential um, third c relates to clarity people i think jim through the covid uh, challenges were craving clarity sure clarity of purpose clarity of direction they wanted to strap on to some level of control and leaders who can provide clarity, allow people to have some form of control professionally of where, where their organizations and their leaders are going. So you need to communicate thoughtfully with, with clarity. You don't want people to guess uh, by, by, by any means. Um, and so that's, that's really important. And then finally, consistency. Leaders need to show up as who they are on a consistent basis. People don't like hot and cold temperaments. They don't. They don't know if they're walking on eggshells one day and they're they're buddy buddy the next, Jim. And so, having being consistent is also important. So those are the four C's I look for: a uh, combination of behavioral based interviews as well as their manner and style, using examples during the interview process. That's very interesting, and I I, I appreciate those four C's. I think you've hit on something very very true there. And uh, I also, from my own personal perspective, I look at those four C's and I see a fifth C, communication, weaving its way through all four of those C's. And because of my particular area of, of experience and expertise, when you are looking for people with those four C's, do you find them, um, in some cases, are you able to raise people up from a, from a, from a previous level to a leadership level where they may not have had the opportunity to share those talents and those, um, those qualities previously? Are you, are, you, are you unearthing new individuals? Are you finding new, new, uh, new diamonds there? Yeah. Well, let, let me give the, you and your viewers a, a stat that, um, that in 2022, 55% of executives surveyed by Price Waterhouse Coopers are open to changing their jobs in 2022. Wow. 55% wow. of the sampling, which means that 
people are still looking for great opportunities. And it's frankly, my firm's job to get to that 55% in our, our searches to make sure that we're un unearthing those individuals who are open. I think because there is the, the, the people are retiring at a greater rate now post COVID, Jim, organizations, institutions uh, are not gonna have the luxury of hiring, quote, the tried and true. Right. And it, it makes our job a little harder because the clients ask, well, what have they actually done <laughs> in their experience? <laughs> and so we're focused on trying to articulate the, the skills and the competencies that these emerging leaders have, Jim. So we're, we're seeing quite a shift. That is interesting. And I think, that, yeah, that's one thing that I, that I hadn't really thought about in this conversation is that, you know, we're seeing this national trend of, um, of uh, leaving work or, or leaving a job, and some people are retiring, some people are changing jobs, some people are sitting it out for a while to figure out what they're going to do next. And how do you find, how are your clients um, having these openings? Or are they openings that have come because of retirement, or are they openings of, because of, of the changes in the uh, in the business world lately, or is it more uh, a, a, um, a continual process for them that they're always looking for new people and they always need new people? Yeah, so for our industry, um, we're, we're engaged when there's an actual opening. So that, that usually consists of, of three things. Someone leaves voluntarily, um, someone leaves involuntarily, <laughs> or a client's creating a new position. Um, and the the latter, that last creating a new position um, in light of all this pent up demand, um, you know, finding people who are talented fundraisers and, and, and development professionals, we're seeing tremendous demand, Jim, as organizations want to garner uh, increased resources and funds from major donors. Um, so, but my, our CEO searches typically come about from retirements, um, uh, but that's the typical route. And when you're when you're finding these candidates for, and you're bringing them to the attention of your your clients, what channels do you use to find these these executives? Do you find them through past relationships, which you've mentioned you've got great relationships with people over the last twenty plus years? But are you also finding people through um, different means? Like, or have you, has, has our uh, video conference call environment added more people to the mix, or is that kind of cut, culled the field a little bit? Yeah, when I grew up in the business in 1999, Jim, one of my mentors said, you solve searches by the phone. Mm. You solve searches by the phone. And so while certainly um, LinkedIn and Twitter and other social media constructs help us get the word out about opportunities, the the one-on-one -on -one high touch solicitation via phone allows that intimate relationship to understand an executive's values and ambitions, their accomplishments and the like. So recruiting is very much a game of attraction um, the, the best people are uh, gainfully and excited what they do with passion, but there's something in their heart that they're a little empty on, and it's, it's trying to figure out what, what, what's missing in their career professionally or their current organization that our, my client can help satisfy, Jim. And so um, the phone is our best friend. I think that's an interesting way you use that phrase, uh, that what's missing in their heart. I, I, I really like the way you said that, and I think that that's a very true statement, and it can be applied both on the, the, the hirer and the hiree uh, side, because um, as, a, as a communicator, I believe in the power of touching the heart in the storytelling process so that you can get people's attention and get people's interest. And also the fact that you're talking about the telephone resonates with me because you and I are of a generation where we worked on the phones. We called people. We had, and people picked up or put you into voicemail, but they returned the call. 
and I'm seeing that that has changed a little bit in the world as far as people not ever, not ever answering their phones or uh, only responding after they've thoroughly vetted the person that's calling via text and, and email before they say, okay, I'll have a conversation with you. Is that a challenge in this day and age for you as a, as a um, search consultant? Absolutely. I mean, people are certainly being inundated. I mean, I'll call people and then they'll text me back. And if I wanted to text you, I would have. I would have <laughs> talked with you. Uh, and so I even have clients do that too. Um, but you, you do have to be cognizant of, of using, again, technologies right. to, to get people who are willing and committed to talk to on the phone. But you really can't have a conversation around one's heart to use you use this analogy jim you can't have that through uh passive communications right. um and very much what we do is storytelling uh storytelling of the clients ambitions and aspirations the executives aspirations and where 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 that meets uh, but we just to answer your question directly we need to uh, be more diligent in following up just because people are being inundated and I like that you wove that storytelling element in as well, Andrew, because it really is the, the key factor for, um, for the prospective uh, executive to be able to communicate that they're, for want of a better phrase, they're into it. They want to be involved. And it also helps for the, the company or the organization to be able to communicate that, you know, you'll have a home here. You'll have a place here. This could be your, your, your new home. Um, Andrew, I apologize. We are running a little short on time here, but I wanted to ask you, how would prospective uh, candidates for uh, employment uh, placement and how would prospective customers, uh, organizations, contact you if they wanted to uh, engage your services? Sure. Because I love the phone, that's the theme of the last 10 minutes. <laughs> you can call me personally, and that number is 267-257-1910. Uh, Again, that's 267-257-1910. You know, that's a tip, Jim. You always want to leave your number twice. That's right. So they don't have to re replay the voicemail. That's right. Or you can certainly look uh, online um, at our LinkedIn site. Uh, we post all of our jobs there or our website, which is Lincoln Leadership, all one word, dot co or dot co. Wonderful. Well, Andrew, I really am grateful that you spent some time with me today, and I hope our viewers uh, can appreciate uh, the challenge that you are facing in starting a business in this new world order, if you will. And I'm grateful for your time, and I congratulate you on the success in your first year of, of uh, entrepreneurship. And I know that entrepreneurship is something that you experience even when you're working at a larger company because you, take man you, you took ownership of your space, of, of, your, of your tasks. And I, I think uh, that has served you well, and I really look forward to hearing more from you down the line. And if our, our viewers today have any further questions, I would be happy to share them with Andrew as well. Uh, you can reach me by phone, 215-266-5943, voice or text. And uh, you can also reach out to me via email, jim at jhdenterprises.com. My website is jimdiolorenzo.com. And I look forward to seeing you all again here very, very soon. Uh, uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again.